Okay, I gave you an equation here that is factorable. So we will factor this. Okay, so this is a simple trinomial. Therefore, two brackets, x, x, multiplies to 12, adds to negative 4. Get your numbers that will multiply to 12. 6 and 2. I need a negative 4. So the x values are 6 and negative 2. Okay, I'm going to show you how the formula works. I obviously wouldn't pick the formula on this one because fact it was factorable. So if it is factorable, you, factoring is way faster. But let's just see that the formula will give us the same answers. So x equals, here's the first part, negative b. So I don't want you to think about it like that. I just want you to think opposite b. So our b is negative 4. So you should write positive 4 plus minus the square root of. I want you to do the b squared and write that number down. So what is this squared? It's always positive. It's whatever you square. So I want you to just write that in because I always get this. People who write me this. And then it just messes up their whole question because that's not right. So b squared is 16 minus 4 bracket something bracket something. 4 times the a number. So what is the a value? 1. Because you have 1 x squared. And c is negative 12. All over 2 times... The A number, 1. Okay, I want you to go into your calculator and I want you to type in what is 16 subtract 4 times 1 times negative 12. Subtract 4 times 1 times negative 12. 64. <clears throat> okay, we are going to type this into our calculator consistently. So here's what we're going to do. Bracket 4 plus root 64 bracket divided by 2. Are brackets important there? Yes because you're trying to say to your calculator, I need this whole top thing, and then divide by two. <clears throat> Some people's calculators are brackety. So are you a person who has brackets like that? You might need two brackets if you're a bracket person. Does that make sense? Some people just have brackety calculators that as soon as they push the square root button, they there just does a bracket. So if you did, you need two brackets. My calculator is not brackety. Mine wasn't bracket at all. So then that's what mine looks like. So if you have a brackety calculator, yours would have had a bracket before the six. So then you would need a two brackets. Does that make sense? Everybody can get the right answer? Six? I got a bracket, yeah, thanks. Then you're going to have to redo it all for subtract the square root of 64 and divide by 2. So the one time is when you add, and then the one time you'll have to subtract. Does that work in your calculator? You should get negative 2. Give me like a wave if I have to come see what's going on with your calculator if you don't know how to do the bracket parts and stuff.
I can come around and see what kind of calculator. Okay. Did you notice that that matched our answers? From packing, so that's cool. Okay, so try these. So, would it be helpful if we just said A was two, B was six, and C is negative seven? Is that gonna be helpful if we just write that down first? X equals. Negative B. So negative 6 plus minus the square root of b squared, so please square it right now, so 36, minus 4 bracket 2 bracket negative 7, all over, so the whole thing is over, 2 times 2. So now I just do this little part in my calculator. So just that part I do in my calculator. So 36 subtract 4 times 2 times negative 7. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not the same? Anybody the same? 92? Yeah. Oh, what is going on? What did you get? Not 92, obviously, but it sounds good. Now you got it? Did you, you might have forgotten a negative on your 7 or something. Okay, let me see how you type it. So. You don't have to write this down, but I'm going to show you what it would look like in your calculator. So this is what you should be typing. You don't have to write that, but that's what it would look like in your calculator. So you have to do it twice in your calculator. That's the first version, that's the second version. And I believe I have the answers at the very, very bottom of your page. So you should see if your answers match at the bottom of your page there. So opposite B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C. Totally running out of room here over 2a. So do you notice how I'm also always, on this stage, I'm multiplying the bottom together as well, like there's a 2 times 1.5, so I did that already. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to need this value, so 38.44 subtract 4 times, did you get 31.84 inside that number? Answers are at the bottom. Are they matching? Okay, what does this mean? What does this even mean? What is 0.19 on a graph? The x-intercept. 
So you have a 0.19 x-intercept and a 3.95 x-intercept. And it's a parabola shape. What kind of U is it? Is it a, an up U or did it get flipped downward? How do I know? Up, because it's 1.5. So this is my understanding of what it would look like. Okay, so here's what my applied people got to do. Y equals, and I put the equation in there, and I graphed it. Then I went second calculate the zero, and then I put my mouse here and here to say, hey, my x-intercept is between there and there. The x-intercept is 0.1857. That's why it's 0.19. And then I wanted to find that one, so I went, I moved my mouse, and I said it's between here and here. So my x-intercept there is 3.95. That matches. Okay. Um, I'll let you do those later. We're not going to do them now, but you know what I did to you on your test? I should have done this in your notes, but... This might be something that I put on your test. I might give you the equation like this. Do you understand right now, you can't look at A, B, and C's? You can't do that right now because what do you have to do first? You have to move it to a zero. You can't do A, B, and C if you have stuff going on on both sides, right? You always need to move and have one side be zero. That's always the rule, okay? So I tried to trick you on your test if you need a star besides something like that where I don't put them on one side. So you make sure you put them on one side beforehand, okay? Okay. So what uh, connections can you make here? Okay, so the formula, I'm just going to write this out here, but you don't need to, but. Okay, so when I work with this formula, this square root part that we did has a name called the discriminant, is the name of it. So it tells us some stuff about our parabola. If this discriminant number is positive and we square root a positive number, we end up with two answers. So I know my parabola will look like that. It'll cross twice. Okay? Because if you square root a positive number, right, and then you add or subtract, that's going to do two different numbers. Okay, what if my discriminant was zero? If you add the square root of zero to something and subtract the square root of zero to something, does it do two different things? Not anymore, right? Because adding zero, subtracting zero, it doesn't do anything. So you're going to get one answer, which would look like this. Does that make sense? Your parabola will touch once which means the vertex is actually the x-intercept. And if the discriminant is a negative number, what do you know about square rooting negative numbers? Doesn't work. If you try it in your calculator, your calculator will say error. You can't square root negative numbers. So what would that look like? This. No solutions. Does this visually make sense? Is this parabola ever going to hit the x-axis? No. Okay. So how many solutions are there going to be? 
So all I'm going to do is b squared minus 4ac. I'm just going to do the square root part of the formula. So b squared is 144. See where I'm getting that number from? b squared is 144. Because negative. negative 12 gets squared. Yeah. So no matter what, positive there. Because whatever you're squaring doesn't matter, right? Minus 4 times 5 times negative 3. Okay, everyone's okay with those values? In your calculator, what is the value of that? I got 204. Yeah. So what do I know about this parabola? How many x-intercepts will it have? It's going to have two solutions. It's going to have two answers to it. OK. Next one, what is b squared minus 4ac? So b squared is, you can do that in your head, 100 minus 4 bracket 5 bracket 16. So I got a negative value, if anybody else is. So what do I know about this parabola? How many x-intercepts will it have? Zero. It will have no x-intercepts. It'll be a parabola that looks like this. It will never, ever cross. And the last question b squared minus 4ac, just that part, 100 minus 4, 5, 5. So that equals 0 in my calculator. So I would state how many x-intercepts will this parabola have? One. Oh, one. One. So visually, it will look like this. There will be one x-intercept exactly. So just how many solutions? I just do that part of it. So what are the solutions? So this continues this question. So here we go, x equals opposite b, so positive 12, plus or minus the square root of 204, because we already did this up here. We already did the work up there. So 12 plus or minus the square root of 204, we already did that work, over 2 times 5. In other words, that would be a 10, right? On the bottom? 2 times 5. Okay, type it in your calculator. Give me two answers. This time I didn't put them on the bottom for you to check. Let's see if you can get them. How'd you do on your accuracy? 
Don't this is a brackety calculator. If you have a brackety calculator, do you have a brackety one? So you see how I have to have two there? Because this is called an open bracket, so if there's one, two open brackets somewhere along the line, you have to have two closed brackets. Yeah. Well, I got 20 more than that. I got 22, 28 instead of 0. .228. I think I typed it in right. 12 minus that divided by 10. Did you divide by 10? That's why you're decimal off. Okay, that's good. Okay, the next one. So this would be x equals opposite b, so negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 0. Because I've, I've already done that work, right? So if we're just we're going to copy that number down. Oh, you all right? Yep. Over 2 times 5. <laughs> 2 times 5 is really a 10. Okay, technically this is what I would do. Plus or minus the square root of 0. Look at what I would do to it. Forget it. It's not going to do anything mathematically. So what is the one x-intercept answer? Negative, negative one. Because negative 10 divided by 10. OK, the last part of this. Okay, I need to talk about inequality symbols because you're going to use them here. Did you know if a number is positive, another way I can write that is greater than zero? Does that make sense to you? If a number is positive, it's greater than zero. If a number is negative, how else could I write that in math? Less than zero. And if you are zero, then you're going to be equal to zero. So these are the three options, because we talk about our discriminant being positive, negative, or zero. So here's your three options. So it's either something bigger than zero, less than zero, or equal to zero, right? Okay, I want to solve for the k value in order for the quadratic to have one solution. So what is the rule to having one solution? Is it op this, this, or this option? The three options. To have one answer, your discriminant is what? Equal to zero. Okay, b squared gets replaced by 144. Subtract four bracket, four bracket k. I don't know the C number. That's what I'm actually trying to figure out. Okay, how do we solve this? This is algebra. I want this unit to look better. Can you change that unit? There's something you can do to that unit. How else can you rewrite that unit on the next step? Negative 16K. Move, divide. It's all algebra. So move and divide. So 
So k equals 9. Okay, the next question says I want my quadratic to end up with two solutions. <clears throat> so how do I get two solutions? Which option do I write? Should I be bigger than zero for two solutions, less than zero, or equal to zero? Greater than zero. So I'm going to write that in math. I want to end up being... I need that number to be bigger than zero because I need to be positive. Okay, so I'm going to fill in. What number gets replaced with b squared? 144. I'm just going to square it already. Subtract 4 times 3 times the k. I'm going to make this term look better. <clears throat> okay, we have to talk about inequalities here. I'll solve this two ways so that you can see the same thing. Okay, so some of you might have said, I'm just going to move the 12k over. Some of you might have just done that, move to the 12k and divided. How do you read this? This is awkward to read. 12 is greater than k. I usually start with my variable. So how do you read it if you wanted to start with your variable? k is what compared to 12? Smaller than 12. Okay, I have to tell you a math rule. You're going to run into it more at the last unit as well. If I had moved my 144 over, if I had done it the other way where I moved my 144 over, then I'm dividing by negative 12. Okay, this is something crazy, it's just a math rule. If you're ever solving inequalities and you multiply or divide by a negative number, it makes your sign flip-flop. So k is, and then you would have to flip, and then we get to the same answer. So that is a math rule, so if you do end up doing algebra like that, in algebra, if you ever divide by a negative number, it flip-flops your sign around. <clears throat>